Hi, welcome back to my mom life. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Jordan and today we're making homemade pretzels. Here are all of the ingredients that you're going to need. I have some all-purpose flour. You're also going to need some milk. I'm using whole milk. You're gonna need some melted butter, some brown sugar, yeast. This is instant yeast in the jar, but you can use the packets. I have some salt. You're also going to need some baking soda and warm water. We're gonna dip our pretzels when they're done baking in some butter. So I have a stick of butter here, and then I have some pretzel salt. You can use just coarse salt, but I found this pretzel salt on Amazon. My mom actually ordered it for me, so thank you, mom. If you're interested in that, I can link it in the description box for you. So the first step is to warm up our milk. I warmed it up in the microwave for about a minute. You want to be able to touch the milk with your finger and it not be too hot. Then I'm going to add in our yeast, and I'm gonna let this sit and activate for about five minutes. And that just means that I'm letting the yeast kind of come alive and making sure that it's good. Because if you do all of this and your yeast isn't good, then it's a waste of ingredients, it's a waste of time. So I always like to make sure that my yeast is going to activate. So once it starts to foam up, then I know that, it, that we are good to go. So then I can add in all of my other ingredients. After about five minutes, I saw that my yeast was foamy and perfect, so I went ahead and started adding my ingredients in. I added in the brown sugar. I find that it's easier to whisk the wet ingredients with like the sugar and things like that before adding the flour in. I'm using my stand mixer today. You could do this totally by hand if you wanted. It would just be a lot more work. I like to use the dough hook on my stand mixer when I make doughs like this. So I'm gonna add in all of the brown sugar and then we will whisk it all together. I'm also going to add in the melted butter. Mine kind of firmed up a little bit because I had it sitting on the counter and my house is cold, but you're gonna add in the butter and I just mix that up a little bit before adding in the dry ingredients. I'm gonna go ahead and add in about half of my flour and then we will get that going and then I can add in the other half. I think that it just makes less of a mess that way. I'm also gonna add in my salt. So I'm gonna put my dough hook on my KitchenAid and get that going and then add in the rest of my flour. Now, depending on where you live and the temperature and the humidity, you may need to add a little bit more flour. And in fact, on this day I did, I added in a few tablespoons more of flour just to get to the right consistency. So if you're noticing that your dough is not coming together after a few minutes of being in the mixer or kneading, then go ahead and just add a few tablespoons or a tablespoon at a time of flour until it just kind of comes together a little bit better. Now that I have all of my flour in there, I'm gonna go ahead and let this knead in my mixer for about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, I went ahead and turned my mixer off and took the dough and put some oil around it. I like to oil the bottom and sides of the bowl and then also the dough ball itself just so that it stays moist while it's rising, it doesn't dry out and it won't stick to the bowl that way. As you can see, this is a quite sticky dough, but that's what you're looking for. You don't want it to be too dry. So a little bit of a sticky dough is okay in this case. So like I said, I'm gonna take some oil on my hand and just kind of rub it around the bowl and on the dough itself. And then we will cover this with a towel and stick it in a warm place for one to two hours until it is doubled in size. Thank you. 
So now that my dough has been sitting and it rose beautifully, I'm gonna go ahead and punch it down and then I'm gonna put it on my clean counter. I'm gonna put some flour down and we're gonna divide this up into 12 sections. This will make 12 medium-sized pretzels. If you wanted them a little bit bigger, you could go ahead and make smaller, maybe eight pieces. But yeah, I made 12 medium-sized pretzels with this. A good tip is to coat your knife or whatever you, you're using to cut your dough with some flour. It just helps prevent sticking the, uh, the dough from sticking to the knife. So you can see I'm kind of putting some flour on my knife and then cutting the dough. So I cut it in half and then in half again, and then I had four sections that I cut into thirds. As I'm doing this, I have my oven preheating so that it is ready to go once I have all of this ready. So now that I have my dough cut and divided, I'm going to mix up my baking soda solution. This is what makes a pretzel a pretzel. So it's very important that you do this step. You're going to get some really warm water, not boiling, but just really warm hot water out of your tap. And I'm going to dissolve the baking soda in this large bowl. And then I will set that aside until I get a few pretzels rolled out and formed and then we're going to let them soak in this for a couple of minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and roll out one of my sections. I just like to roll it in a long rope. I'm not like a professional pretzel maker so bear with me as I try and show you this. You're just going to take it and kind of twist it together and form a pretzel and then I will make a few of these and then we will start letting them soak in that baking soda solution. Now that I have a few ready to go, I'm going to place as many as I can fit into this bowl. They need to be fully submerged in this baking soda solution. So you'll see me kind of poking them down a little bit. I let them sit in there for about a minute to two minutes and then I transfer them to my baking sheets. I have my baking sheets lined with the silicone baking mask that just prevents sticking. I love them. If you need some of these, you can get them on Amazon pretty cheaply. Once they soaked in that solution for a minute or two, I went ahead and moved them over to the baking sheet and then just kept repeating this process. My oven is preheating to 450 degrees. I forgot to mention that. So it's a super hot oven that these are gonna go into. Once you get your pretzels soaked and on the baking sheet, that's when you want to sprinkle them with salt. It sticks way better than doing it afterwards. So definitely sprinkle them with your salt before baking. Then we will dip them in the butter and that salt will actually stay on there. I'm gonna pop these in the oven and they don't take long at all to bake. So while they're baking, I'm gonna melt my butter. They take about seven to 10 minutes to bake and they will be nice and brown. That baking soda solution really makes the pretzel turn nice and brown. 
So I'm gonna dip them in the butter and then they're good to go. These are absolutely delicious. They're just like Auntie Anne's pretzels. I'm telling you that brown sugar in there really makes them taste like Auntie Anne's. If you are interested in making this recipe, I will have it down in the description box for you. Thank you so much for watching my video today. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Have you ever tried to make homemade pretzels? I've made them several times. I have another video on little pretzel bites where I made cinnamon and sugar ones and also some original ones. So I can link that for you if you're interested in that one. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you subscribe and stick around and I'll see y'all my next one. Bye guys.